So we're looking now at generating sets. So generating set. Let S be a subset of V and T a subset of V. Oh, that just tells you that that's how you read that. We denote by this these S with uh, these angular brackets or angle brackets around it a new set that is formed by taking all possible linear combinations of vectors in S. If that thing equals T, then we say that T is generated by S or that S is a generating set for T. So from now on, whenever you see this thing, you read the set generated by S. There's actually another word for it, which sometimes is used. Sometimes you say that it's T is spanned by S. Okay. Now here's an example. If S is the set containing just the vector 1, 2, so vector in R2, what is the set generated by S? Okay, well, since S is a singleton set, i.e. it has, only has one element, all the possible linear combinations of vectors in S will just be the scalar multiples of that vector. So the set generated by S will be all those vectors of the form alpha times the vector 1, 2, such that alpha is any real number. And of course, that's just going to give us, if you think about it geometrically, it's just going to give us this line extends infinitely far in both directions um, in the direction of 1, 2, right? And also the opposite direction, because of course the scale could be negative. Okay, so another example. Let's, yeah, another example. If S now has two vectors in it, 1, 2, and 3, 6, what is the set generated by S? Okay, so we have a set of all possible linear combinations. It's, now we have scalar times one first vector plus scalar times the second vector, and those scalars can be any real numbers. So that's the answer, but actually you can simplify this, right? Because those two vectors, one, two, and three, six, they're just scalar multiples of each other. So alpha, so alpha one, two, plus beta three, six, that's actually the same as just having alpha plus mm, alpha 1, 2, plus 3 beta 1, 2, which equals alpha plus 3 beta times by 1, 2. OK. So that alpha plus 3 beta, if alpha and beta are any real numbers, that alpha plus 3 beta is also just any real number. So we could just call it gamma. As they do here, they call it the change that they say, is, let's call it gamma. And so the set generated by S is just all the, mul gam all the multiples of 1, 2, where the gamma that multiplies it is any real number, and that's exactly the same as the previous set we had, right? As this set. Exactly the same as this set. So these two sets, the second containing just this one vector, and the second containing these two vectors that are multiples of each other, they generate the same set. The set generated by them is the same, okay? Even though these sets were different. Now I have another example. If S equals 1, 2, 1, 0, now these vectors are not multiples of each other, what is the set generated by S? So straightforward, you write down the all linear combinations like that. Okay. But actually, this can also be simplified into this is actually equal to R2. This thing is actually equal to the whole of R2. Okay. Now it says it can, any vector in R2 can be expressed as a linear combination of the vectors in S, so of 1, 2, and 1, 0. You should be able to show this is true by solving now this equation. Alpha times 1, 2 plus beta times 1, 0 must equals xy, and where xy can be anything, right? So that xy is any vector in R2. So we do this by solving for the values of a, alpha, and beta in terms of x and y. So why, make sure you understand why this is sufficient to show that the span of s equals R2, and then do it. OK, so why is it sufficient to show that the span of s equals R2? Well, because here we write down any vector right? Any vector, x, y, any arbitrary vector, and then we find out, well, what must alpha be and what must beta be so that we get x and y? And that way we prove that you can get any vector, x, y, by making alpha and beta the suitable scalars to multiply the vectors 1, 2, and 1, 0. Okay, now, that, now let's do it. So this equation that we have here, this equation that we have here, it actually can be written as a matrix equation, right? You can write that right-hand side there. It's the same as having 1, 2, 1, 0, 
times alpha beta. Okay? So then what we're doing actually is we're solving this matrix equation. We're solving it for alpha and beta, where the x and y, where the matrix is known, and the x and y, we also consider them to be known. They are arbitrary, but we're going to consider them be x and we say, oh, arbitrary x and y, then we find what alpha and beta are in terms of those. So the unknown here is the alpha and the beta. Okay, so let's do this. Of course, you solve this by Gauss reduction, right? So we can start off by doing row 2 minus 2 times row 1, and then the matrix will become 1, 1, same top row. Next row will be um, 0 minus 2. Then there's the unknown, which you put just leave there, like alpha and beta, you always do this, you always leave it there. But then the x and the, the constant on the right, that thing you change. So you change this to y minus 2x, okay? Now we could do, now we should do, let's do row 2 divided by 2. So now it becomes 1, 1, 0. Oh, let's actually, let's actually divide row 2 by minus 2. So we get 1 there, alpha, beta stays the same, and here we have x. Now we're going to have times that by negative, so let's have 2x minus y instead of y minus 2x. Now let's do row 1 minus row 2. Okay? So then we're going to get 1, 0, 0, 1, alpha, beta, equals... So x minus 2x, that would be minus x, minus minus y is plus y. So we have minus x plus y, and we have... Here we still have the 2x minus y. Okay, so that, that, that matrix on the left, that's just the identity matrix. So this whole thing is just saying that alpha, beta is equal to, I'll write it now, y minus x, 2x minus y. So it's saying that if you want to get the vector x, y from as a linear combination of the vectors 1, 0 and, 1, 2 and 1, 0, then you must just make alpha, you just make alpha y minus x, and you make beta 2x minus y, and then you get the x, y that you wanted to get. Let's just check that. Okay. So it's saying that to get x, y, we go y minus x times 1, 2, plus 2x minus y times 1, 0, right? So what does that become? Top row becomes y minus x plus 2x minus y. Oh, this is not going to work. What's gone wrong here? Where have I made a mistake? I'm going to get the t second row will be 2y minus 2x. But that's, that, that's not what we want. We just want a y there. Okay. So let me look at this Gauss reduction I've done again. So we have 1, 2, 1, 0. We have alpha and beta. We have x and y. So we started out with row 2 minus 2 times row 1. And that gives us... That gives us... Um, we started out with row 2 minus row 1. That gives us 0 minus 2, of course. It gives us y minus 2 times x, sure. Then we did row 2 divided by... Ah, I forgot to actually do this division. Whoops. In the, on the, in the right. We divided by row 2 by minus 2. Okay. But I forgot... <sighs> Over here, I didn't do that properly. So it should be... It should be x minus y over 2, right? Okay. So these are going to change. Okay, then I did row 1 minus row 2. Okay. Row 1 minus row 2. So now that will be row 1 minus row 2. That will be um, x minus x. Minus minus y over two, so you just have you just end up with y over two over here. You still have the x minus y over two there. Okay, but this is still not going to work, is it? So now the things are y over two and x minus y over two. Okay, so if I try that. Mm, 
I'm going to get, oh, sorry. If I try that, I would get y over 2 times 1, 2 plus x minus y over 2 times 1, 0. So that's going to give us um, y over 2 at the top plus x minus y over 2. And the bottom we're going to have 2 times y over 2, which is y plus 0, because there's nothing there. Ah, yes, so here we get, we get x, y. So we do get x, y. Okay, well, we fixed our Gauss reduction. Okay. So, you know, for example, if we let... If we wanted to get the vector... Um, let me leave that. If we wanted to get the vector... Let's say we wanted to get the vector... Uh, minus 3, 2, right? Then we just make the... Alpha needs to be 2 over 2, so that would be 1. So you have to just have 1, 2 there. And the beta needs to be x minus y over 2, so that'll be minus 3. It'll be minus 3 minus 1, right? Minus 3 minus 1. Okay, 1, 0. So that becomes 1, 2 plus oh, 1, 2 minus 4 times 1, 0. Sorry. Which is just 1 minus 4 is minus 3, 2 minus 0 is 2. So we do get it's minus 3, 2. Okay. And I think I'll stop there for now.